Hi, I'm Rachel Basco with Bossier Parish Community College, and this module will cover suffixes. Suffixes are the word parts that are found at the end of the word. They change the meaning of the word, so they can take a noun and they can make it into a verb or an adjective. So let's take a look. Over on the left are a group of people sitting together and they are friends. They know one another and they act kindly towards one another. The group of people on the right are acting friendly. They don't know us, but they're waving and acting kind towards us. So their behavior is friendly or to act like a friend. Now let's take a look at suffixes that are commonly found in medical terminology words. The first group of suffixes we will look at all mean pertaining to. There are over 20 suffixes that mean pertaining to. I have listed the most common ones here. I have listed them in groups together to help you remember them. So if we look at the first line, it's tick, ick, al, and ickle. We know these are all suffixes because the hyphen comes first and then the letters because we're at the end of the word. So tick, ick, al, and ickle. The next group is r and airy. The next group is eel and ent. And the final list is eus, us, and us. The best way to learn these is to make flashcards because it is strictly memorization for you to remember the words that mean, the suffixes that mean pertaining to. Now we'll look at our suffixes in medical terminology and we'll arrange them by groups. So we have suffixes that refer to specialty areas. We have suffixes that are related to symptoms, those that are related to diseases or conditions, those that tell us that this word has to do with a diagnostic test or a treatment. Let's look at those that are areas of study. Very commonly we will see the suffixes logi and logist. They all mean the study of or the expert in the study of. So the suffix logi means the study of. Here we have bio and bio means life. So when we look at this word, biology, when we break it down, it means the study of life. When we read a medical term, we will always start with the suffix and then pronounce the compound word. So logi is study of, bio is life, biology is the study of life. What about a biologist? The suffix here is logist, and that is in the expert in the study of. So logist means expert in the study of. Because we have bio, it's life, so a biologist is an expert in the study of life. Let's look at iatric and ischian. So pediatric is the medical science of specializing in children. So iatric means the medical science especially of. The root ped means children. So pediatric means the medical science of specializing in children. A pediatrician is a medical doctor that specializes in the treatment of children. So the suffix ischian means it's a medical doctor. Let's look at two common suffixes that pertain to symptoms. So symptoms are what the person feels or complains about. So when a person comes in to talk to a doctor, they will have a complaint, and that is what they complain about. The first suffix is itis. Itis means swelling or inflammation. So arthritis means inflammation of the joints. The next word is arthralgia. The suffix algia means pain. So this means pain of the joints. So often people will say that, oh, my arthritis is acting up. The arthritis is the swelling, but the pain is due to arthralgia. And that is a very big difference because in medical terminology, we have to be very precise in how we use our terms. Other uh, suffixes that mean diseases or conditions are rhea. Rhea means flow. So we have the word diarrhea, and rhea means a flow or discharge. Oma means tumor. 
So here we have a carcinoma. A carcinoma is a cancerous tumor. And if we look at this man in his mouth, they're showing you a tumor right here. Not necessarily a carcinoma, but an oma means tumor. And the last one on this list is pathy, which means disease. So a neuropathy, see we pronounce it differently, same word though, same meaning, means a disease of the nerve. On to diagnostic terms. Now with this we need to be very careful how we use our suffixes because it's very important that we are very precise and use the correct suffix for the meaning. Anything that ends in graph, that is the instrument that is used to create a record. Graphy is the process of recording, whereas gram is the record, or the piece of paper that shows the picture of what we have taken a picture of. So let's take a closer look at this. This man is having an electrocardiography. We are recording the electricity of the heart. So graphy is the process of recording. So in this picture here, we see that we have an electrocardiogram. The electrocardiogram in this, pic is, this image is the picture of the electricity of the heart. That's the record. Then we have the electrocardiograph, which is the machine that actually creates the record. So the whole process is called electrocardiography. The electrocardiogram is the record, and the electrocardiograph is the machine or the instrument that makes the record. On to treatments. Common suffixes that mean treatments would be ectomy, which is a removal of, and so vasectomy is the removal of tube. Tomy means to cut into, and ostomy means to create an opening, so a colostomy. Once again, it is very important that you use the correct suffixes, suffix to tell the exact treatment. They can't mean more than uh, what their suffix actually means. You can't use them interchangeably. In this picture here is an osteotomy. They have made an incision right here, this is an incision of the bone. On the other side is a colostomy where we have made a permanent opening or hole. So we have, what we see here is an opening into the colon. So that is a colostomy. An osteotomy is a cut, ostomy is the creating of a permanent hole. So when we're looking at our suffixes, once again, we are going to have to just review and memorize our list of suffixes. In the beginning, if you take a course, they will give you a list of suffixes, and I highly recommend that you take the time to memorize those suffixes and understand what each of those suffixes mean. Once again, making flashcards is extremely helpful to help you memorize those word parts, and then, of course, take the quizzes to test your knowledge.